Praise the Lord and God bless you. Welcome to KCC Ministries. This is going to be our new members class. Amen. We thank God for you and those that have decided to join and be a part of this fellowship. And I'm just going to break down a little bit about who we are and uh, what it is that we desire do, to do, um, what we feel like God has called us to do. Amen. We thank God that we started right here um, in Raleigh, in our home, and then God from there began to grow us. Amen. And also enabled us to be able to purchase, not purchase, but be able to operate out in, inside of a facility. The great thing that's unique about KCC Ministries is that we actually started in the midst of the pandemic, amen, when there was a lot of things going on, when people were afraid uh, and still are afraid of the corona or COVID-19, amen. But nevertheless, God has blessed us where no one has gotten sick and that uh, we are still able to hold services. Uh, one of the things that I do want to let you know that we are social distancing. Uh, we are checking temperatures at the door, and we thank God for our sister Irish, amen, who has been uh, instrumental in that as one of our ushers, making sure that everybody is checked temperature-wise, amen. We thank God for Fred, um, um, who is also a part of the church who has uh, started in our home, amen, but has been faithful uh, to continually helping us to grow, Amen. Um, but I want to get started in this class here. We don't want to be before you long. I'm going to do part one, part two, maybe three and four. Um, but I just ask that you hear what we're saying uh, here at this community of believers. Amen. Um, and before we start, I'm just going to pray. Father God, we thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Lord, that you are in full control. And God, we ask God that you would have your way. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O God, my strength, O God, my redeemer. And Lord, continue to have your way, even in the lives of those that have decided to join uh, KCC Ministries and be a part of what you desire to do here in this ministry, Father. We thank you for my wonderful wife, Co-Pastor Sonny. I ask God that you would continually just do a great work in her, Father. And we thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So KCC is what we want to be. We want to be, uh, which is which stands for Kingdom Crusaders for Christ Ministries. And so basically, um, the reason why I felt like God was uh, allowing me to name it Kingdom is because why we exist and why we congregate is for the purpose of God's kingdom. Amen. God being God, um, Jesus, of course, our King, our ruler. And so when I serve, I serve um, Him. You know, I serve God who has employed or anointed me, amen, to give you what it is that he desires to give you, amen. So kingdom, um, of course, crusaders, crusaders meaning, amen, when the crusaders went abroad, they were trying to not only protect the holy land and things of that nature and things that were uh, biblical or represented God's kingdom, uh, but they fought, they fought for it, they talked, they fought and they took, you know, took possession of what was rightfully theirs, amen. And the one thing that we do know is that the enemy has taken uh, or has a foothold in some things. And the one thing as a body of believers is we want to um, be instrumental in taking back, amen, what the enemy has tried to take. So we're kingdom crusaders and we're doing it all for Jesus Christ. That's it. Um, no other man, not me, hey, not, you know, not for my wife, not for my family. We are only doing this for God's kingdom. Amen. And that's the only reason why, for Jesus Christ, the King of glory. Amen. So we are Kingdom Crusaders for Christ. And, and one of the things uh, that we did, we're able to do, we were able to get a, a uh, logo. And what inspired me about this logo is uh, the one thing that we wanted to realize is that we are spiritual beings. And so there's a heavenly host around us. Amen. Just as there's demonic spirits um, that we cannot see, there's a heavenly host. So the wing's going to represent angels. Amen. Um, we believe that even when I'm praying on Saturday night, uh, one of the things that I ask God is to allow the angels to walk up and down in, in the sanctuary. I just believe that they exist, and I believe that they're messengers. And I believe that, you know, being in the midst of an angel, you know, you know will help us, you know, to defeat the enemy and everything like that. Not saying that the, the angel does it because we realize that the Holy Spirit is the one that gives the gifts in God enables us to do what we cannot do in ourselves. But nevertheless, it's good to have angels. The other thing is that we have this shield here, uh, the shield of faith. Uh, and so we want to, we're instrumental in faith. Amen. We're body of believers, but it's according to our faith. Um, how far we've gone so far is totally 100% by faith. 
Amen. So the Bible says that God without faith, it is impossible to please God. This is in uh, Hebrews 11. Amen. It is impossible to please God without faith. So we want to have faith. We want to be able to please God. We want to come to him believing that he is and that he's already operating according to what we have asked for and that he rewards what our faith. Amen. The other thing here is you have the lion. The, we know that Jesus was the lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. And so, um, you know, he was of the tribe of Judah and we know he roars. Amen. We know that he's He's king, you know, and when he comes back, amen, he's going to conquer. He's going to subdue. He's going to, you know, reign as king and Lord, amen. We see here the cross within the uh, lion's head, amen. The cross is going to represent, of course, what Jesus did on the cross, amen. He died for our sins, amen. Um, he was our sacrifice. He was our atonement. And so that symbol right there represents, and, and I think that you can't have nothing if you don't have the cross. The cross signifies that we are free, that we have been Amen. Redeemed. Amen. And so we thank God for the cross. Amen. The swords here. You see the swords. The sword here uh, it represents the sword of the spirit. Amen. Which is the word of God. So we, we, we definitely believe in God's word. We stand upon God's word and we realize that we cannot do anything without God's spirit. Amen. And that's the great thing about us. Um, we want to actually continue to promote and, and teach the, the, the um, teaching about God's Holy Spirit. Amen. Which each one of us need, amen, to live and to be able to thrive in the world that we live in, you know, in kingdom, amen. We need God's Holy Spirit. So that's the swords. And then, of course, um, the only other thing is that, of course, our name, Kingdom Crusaders for Christ, amen. And then it says down here, ordinary people doing extraordinary things for Christ. And believe this, I'm, 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 I'm ordinary, amen. There's nothing great about me, amen. You know, I still, you know, get weak at times. I fall short, of the glory at times. And the Bible says we all fall short. And so we thank God for repentance and, and, and forgiving and God's willingness to forgive us for our sins and cleanse us from unrighteousness. So that's our um, logo, our vision. And now you might not be able to see it, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to read our vision statement to you. Our vision is investing in people. And so what we want to do is we want to invest in people, you know, invest in people, uh, you know, you know, whatever we can in any way we can. You know, of course, we want to pull the word in them because if we can fish and not only fish and continue to give, but if we can pour the word of God into them so they're learning because we won't want to, to hold all the information. You know, knowledge is power, which I believe. And so when we get into the kingdom of God as babies, we're, we're, we're supposed to desire the sincere milk of the word. And so we're wanting to invest in people, you know, our time, our resources. Um, we want to teach we want to preach. Uh, we want to, and then uh, with that, we want them to grow, because we feel like the teaching is going to bring transformation. So we're going to invest our, t our time. We're going to invest in teaching, you know, and and pouring into other individuals and giving them nuggets that they need to grow, to be successful in life. Amen. To grab a hold of God's precious promises, because as a child of God, there's precious promises that He has promised you. And so we're investing in people. We're bringing transformation through what we teach, which is nothing but the word of God. And that's what we only want to stand on. We don't want to stand on nothing but God's word. Um, and then while they're being transformed, we're, we're praying that we can launch them, you know. And, and within the ministry, we want to launch them into to being the greatest teachers, to launch them into being maybe the greatest ushers, the greatest greeters, maybe the greatest... Um, uh, camera person or a greatest worship team or the greatest musician, whatever it is in, in what capacity that they operate and whatever gifts they bring to KCC ministries, we want to launch them. We want to make sure that they're, they're working in God's kingdom. Amen. And to bring about change in other people's lives. Amen. So I think that when we invest in people and other people invest in people, then we can see multiplication. We can see uh, greater works done in the earth because we are you know, pouring out into God's people and believing that God is going to uh, transform them and, and bring them up to a level of maturity. Um, so, and the reason why we're launching is a purpose for the Reach Our City. Not only do we want to reach our city, but we want to reach beyond the four walls. We want to go beyond the four walls. We want to go into to our city. But we also believe that God wants to get us to the nations. You know, Jesus said this. He said, so you know what? Start in Jerusalem first. And he said, then after you go to Jerusalem, then go to Judea. 
into to, to Samaria, into the uttermost parts of the earth. And, and the reason why is because we had to get the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ out. Amen. Our mission, our mission is winning souls to Christ. And so we want to win souls. Our focus is to win souls. I think, I believe, not think, but I believe and know that the only reason why I am in God's kingdom is because I am to win souls to Jesus Christ. Amen. I am to pull people out of darkness and bring and shine a light. And that light is Jesus Christ. And so our mission is to win souls to Christ and helping them to experience God's love. You know, the one thing I do realize that this ministry has to be of love. Uh, we want to love people. We want to meet people where they are. You know what I'm saying? Everybody is not perfect. I don't know what you may be doing. I don't know what kind of things you're operating in. But the thing is, the only thing that's going to change your life is love. And that's what's changed my life. I was, of course, out in the world. I was doing all kinds of things. But I think, believe, and know for a fact that it was God's love that caused me to change my life. Uh, because when I was out there, I felt like I had no love. There was no love. Nobody really cared about me in the way that I felt like they should care. But in spite of all the wrong that I did, the mistakes that I made, the failings, the fallings, the, the almost going completely, you know, uh, down into the, the ground, you know, God reached his hand out and said, I love you, my son, and I have great things for you. And so that's what we want to do. We want to love people where they are. Uh, it doesn't matter if they're drug addicted. It doesn't matter if they're, they're, they're alcoholics. It doesn't matter if, uh, you know, they're stinking, they're homeless, whatever, whoever they are, whoever they might be. For me, it's a soul, and that soul matters to God. And so we want to reach them in love. And the, by, cre by reaching them in love, what we're doing, we're creating an atmosphere and that will produce transformation. You know, because I think in an atmosphere of love and a genuine love, it, it, it helps people to be to transform because they look at that and they say, you know what, I want that, you know. And so that's what we want. To, and the reason why we do that is for the purpose of th three things. We want people to grow. We want people, of course, to mature in Christ because we can have a lot of knowledge, but we're never still operating in maturity. And, and so we want them to grow. We want them to, to operate in maturity. And then we want them to also operate in leadership. Amen. Amen. The ministry of KCC Ministries is not just Pastor DeMond or Jerome Davis. It's not Pastor, uh, co-pastor Sonia, you know, Davis. Um, we want leaders, you know, pastors, um, evangelists teachers, prof, pro prophets, prophetess, uh, apostles. Amen. We want those gifts to operate in our church because we realize that we need those gifts to function together to, to build the body of Christ. Amen. As you can see up on the top, it says learning and growing together in Christ. I have not arrived. I don't know everything. So as I'm teaching, I'm learning. As I'm teaching, I'm growing. I'm learning. I'm grabbing a hold of revelation. And the same revelation that I'm grabbing, I'm giving it to you. So I feel like that as I'm teaching in whatever capacity, whether it's preaching on Sunday morning, whether it's teaching a class, whatever it is that I'm doing, we are learning and we're growing and we're doing it together. Amen. So I want to let you know that I am in no ways perfect, but I, I, I do love you. And I do want to let you know that I am growing. Amen. And that I don't know everything, but I am growing and I'm I'm, I'm working out the process, the kinks and all that good stuff. Dear friends, on, on, on this page here, I don't have the page number, but this page here says, Dear friends, thank you so much for being part of the membership orientation at KCC Ministries. Amen. We value you and your gifts and, 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 and everything that you bring to the ministry. Amen. We value you. Amen. We love you and we thank you for choosing to be a part of KCC Ministries. Our growth and success is dependent on upon great people like yourself. Amen. You are needed. You are valued. And we love you. Amen. Amen. We are here to serve and, and we want to serve our community. Amen. Sometimes when people get into the four walls, they feel like that's all that there is. But the fact is, like I said, we started in Jerusalem, but now we want to go to Judea and to the other most parts of the earth. So one of the things we want to be, we want to be uh, intentional in winning souls. Amen. And so as we move forward as a church, let us pray and expect Jesus Christ to do great and mighty things among us. Amen. Amen. Among us. I say that together as we grow together on this journey. Amen. Amen. Um, going to flip a few pages over. Um, it says, what is church? What is church? It is a word in the Greek called ecclesia. Ecclesia. It means to be called out, 
an assembly or a congregation. Amen. It's to be called out. Your assembly, you represent who? God. You know, you represent our King, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As a, the Ecclesia is commonly translated as church in the New Testament, called out assembly. It is a congregation of believers whose God has called out of the world and brought into his marvelous light. Amen. And so it is important that the church today understand the definition of Ecclesia. The church needs to self see itself as being called out. And so when we're called out of something, it means that God wants to do something different with that called out one. And the thing about being called out, if he called us out of something, if we've been called out of the world, if we've been called out of darkness, he's bringing us into a place as a body of believers to represent God, to represent his kingdom, to represent who he is. So we're a group of people. The church wants to make a difference in the world. And that's why we go in community. We want people to know that we're not there just to kind of sit high on a pedestal, to wear our big hats and our garments and to look pretty and to show you we got degrees and all that stuff. No, we are there only for community. We are there for people. We are there for souls. Amen. So that's why we exist. Amen. Second Peter, I just want to read that here real quick. And it's second Peter, no, first Peter. Um, let me see, First Peter, and I'm going to read it out of the King James. First Peter 2.9. And the Bible says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So you're chosen. And not only chosen, but now you're royalty. And you're, you're called to, 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 to out of darkness and to represent God's light to other believers. And that's why we have to operate in the spirit of love. The church needs to see itself as being called out by God. It's a church that wants to make a difference in the world. It must be different from the world. Salt is different from the food it flavors. God has called the church to be separate from sin. Amen. So the thing is, as we're growing, uh, we need some things to fall off. And the question is, what is sin? What is sin? What is sin? Because there's some things that be taught that is sin that might not necessarily be sin. And then the Bible says to him who thinks or believe it to be sin, to him it is sin. So everything that you possibly could believe is a sin, we need to make sure that God is saying that. We don't want to be bound, amen, but we don't want to continue to operate in sin, and sin at times is obvious sins, murder, you know, lying, you know, cheating, stealing, fornication, adultery. You know, these are sins, and these are sins against God. And so we want to not transgress God's law. Amen. And so as a church, we have to represent God's church in a different way. And to me, it's not necessarily about clothes. You know, that doesn't make you who you are. You know, you can have the longest dress on, no makeup and still enter into hell. So what represents or what makes you different from the world? And I think it's all built up in one thing, love. Love is what makes you different. There's a light that shines in you, and there's something on you called the Holy Spirit that makes you different than the world. Amen. You want to love. You want to help. You want to see people free. You want to see the people delivered. You want to love them in spite of the situations that they may be going through and the hurt and pain that they may be experiencing. You still want to maybe be able to show love. Um, now, uh, Matthew 5 and 14, God has graciously called us to himself. You know, when he calls us, he calls us to him. You know, it's not about being, you know, a showmanship saying, oh, look at me, look at me. No, God says, now come to me. Because as a father, he wants to know his children. And as children, we desire to know who our father is. And the reason why is because we want to be pleasing to our father. We, and we want our father to be pleased with us. Amen. 
So God, we're, we're called to, to God. Come out from them, the Bible says, and be ye separate, says the Lord. And it says, touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. 2 Corinthians 6, 17. Amen. So God calls us out, you know, to himself. And then he says, be separate. Be separate from those things. Be separate. Separate you. Come out. Because a lot of times if we stay within those type of circles, we can never ever grow into who we are truly called to grow into. We never really go into the maturity because we're still kind of battling. And at times, instead of battling, you just need to come out of it. Just come out so that you won't have to deal with the battle. Now you can get into God. Amen. And not, I'm not saying that there's not going to still be a battle, but it, it, it lessens the battle that you might have going in and out, you know, with uh, some of the things that is is old in your life. And so what you want to do is you want to come out of it and separate yourself and allow God to begin to cleanse you. You know, everybody doesn't get saved overnight. Let me tell you that God don't save you overnight, you know. Can he? Yes, he can. He can deliver you. I've heard testimonies of people being delivered. Boom. God touched them by the Holy Spirit. Next thing you know, they were free from everything. And then I've known people that have taken processes of times, even me included. God has, 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 has delivered. God has sustained. God has healed. And God has did it. And, and sometimes it's process. And sometimes you can't do a deliverance all at once sometimes. Can you? Yes, you can. But at times, God has to take a little bit at a time. You know, because there might be a lot that's going on. There might be some some things, wounds in your heart that need to be to be healed. There might be some things that 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 are many that need to be taken away. You know, but God does it. The church is described in many ways. Amen. In First Corinthians, and we're just going to read this. And I'm not going to be before you long, but I'm a, I'm going to read this. First Corinthians twelve. 18 to 27. This is, but now have God set the members, every one of them in the body. God set them in there. The members. And look, fingers. I need that finger, that finger, that finger, that finger. Hand, I need the hand. I need the arm. I need my nose. I need my mouth. I need my eyes. But they're different things that are operating in this body. But everything is needed. My heart on the inside, what I can't see, I need it to live. My liver, my ears, I need to hear. All these things are needed. My teeth, I need them to grind the meat when I'm eating. My tongue. Everything here that I have is needed. And when you come into the body of Christ, remember Jesus is the head. And we need Jesus, but he also has different parts of the body. So we're setting the body as he pleases. Not as I please. But as God pleases, he places them in the body of Christ. And the Bible says, and if, if they were all one member, where would the body be? If everybody was just one thing, what would the body be? Would the body just be one hand? And it would not be able to operate to the, way, the, to the capacity or level that it needs to operate in. Because if the different parts are not functioning, then, you know, it's, it's, it's basically handicapped. So we need every single part of the body, every single part oper in operation. And let me tell you something, you have gifts. You might not even be flowing in the gifts yet, but you have gifts. And there's some things that God has put on the inside of you. And so you need to know what those gifts are. Amen. But now are they many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again, the head can't say to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more, those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. You might not think it's necessary, but they are. And so we judge no one. When you come into KCC Ministries, we are a non-judgment zone. We don't judge anybody. We love you in spite of whatever condition, whatever background, whatever past you may have had. We want to still love you because God loved us. And, then, and he didn't worry about the past. Matter of fact, when he forgave us, when we asked to to be forgiven, he actually took our sins and threw it as far as the east is to the west. It went all the way. It never came back. And so that's love. And so we don't want to uh, judge people by their past or anything. We want to love, love them where they are. Amen. 
And, and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable upon these which bestow much more abundant honor and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. Amen. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. So God, at times, you can be all that in a bag of chips, but God's still honoring the one that's right there. The usher at the door, he honors the usher. The usher has the eyes. The usher is seeing what's going on. The usher is ushering people into uh, the congregation. The other, the, the usher is observant, watching things. Um, and so we thank God for, uh, for ushers. And they are very instrumental in helping the church build. Uh, we thank God for the greeters on the outside. Amen. A laughing and a loving face that's greeting the cars as they're coming in. That's helping the cars get parked. Um, that's ushering the people into, you know, into the, to the, to the door and everything. You are needed. Amen. And, and we love you. Amen. And to those that have hospitality, that are the donuts and the, and the coffee, you know, and those that clean the church, you are instrumental. Amen. And we thank God for you. Amen. Um, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. Amen. There's no big eyes, no little use. Doesn't matter if you're usher, you're greeter. No matter if you clean the church, we are one in, in Christ Jesus. And we are all needed. And we are all you know, in the same place, this, you know, you know, everybody has different faiths, everybody has different graces, everybody have different giftings, but nevertheless, as a body of Christ, we're, we're in one, there's no schisms, we don't need to be arguing, fussing, fighting, gossiping, and all that other mess that comes along with that sin, when you hate your brother, and you look at him in the face, and you love him, and then behind their back, you're talking negatively about them, we, we don't want to be about that, amen, we want to try to pray, and, and love, on people. Amen. And whether one member suffer, we all suffer with it. One member be honored, then all the members rejoice. We rejoice with you. There's no jealousy here. We, we rejoice with what God is doing and has done in your life. Amen. Now we are the body of Christ and members in particular. Amen. So the, the members, we're the body of Christ. Amen. All right. Um, the church is described in many ways in Scripture, including, of course, the, the, the body or the members of Christ. And then, of course, in Matthew 25, 6. Let's just go there. Matthew 25, 6. And it says, And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye and meet him. So the bridegroom, the bridegroom of Christ. Amen. Um, and... You got to believe this, that when God comes back, he's coming back for his bride. And we are the bride. We are the church. And he's actually coming back for a church without spot or wrinkles. Amen. I'm going to look again. Uh, the next scripture is Revelation uh, 21, 9. And it says, And there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven Last place and talk with me saying, come hither, I will show you the, the bride, the lamb's wife. Jesus was the lamb. Jesus was the slain lamb. He, he was the sacrificial lamb. You know, in the Old Testament, uh, they, 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 they slaughtered lambs, goats. They took the blood of the lamb. They sprinkled it. You know, it was an atonement. Jesus was the lamb. And Jesus, the great thing about Jesus, he wasn't, he, when he got slain, he rose up from the grave. Hallelujah. And he is coming back again for the bride, which is us, the church. Amen. A uh, few more scriptures, and then we're going to go and, and we're going to continue on next week. Amen. I'm just going to put these on YouTube unless uh, we say different that maybe we want to do interaction. If we want to do interaction, Zoom is available. Amen. Just let me know. Amen. All right. So... First Corinthians, I just want to do this last, uh, last two. First Corinthians 3, 9. And it says, for we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. You are God's building. Amen. So we are uh, husbandry. We are God's building. Amen. So this is the way the church is described in many ways. So we have the bride, amen, 
We have members. Amen. We have uh, you are God's husbandry. You are God's building. Now, if I compared that and looked at it in the Amplified, it says, for we are God's fellow workers. So God is moving in the world, but he's moving through us, the bride, the church. His servants working together. You are God's cultivated field, his garden, his vineyard. You're God's building. You're what God operates through. He operates through you. Amen. And then last, uh, and we're going to continue next week. And because uh, I only want to do kind of 30 minute sessions. Um, and uh, so the next one is Ephesians 2. 21. And it says in 2.21, and then get me to 21, so I'm going to scroll up. In whom all the building fitly joined together, groweth into a holy temple in the Lord. So we are God's building, and we're fitly locked in together. Amen. And we're growing together. We're learning. We're growing together. Amen. So that we can be a holy temple for God. And we want God's Holy Spirit to dwell with us. And we want to operate in the things that God has called us to operate, operate in. So look, I love you. I thank God for you. I hope you got something out of our, our uh, part one of our new members class. Amen. Amen. And I pray that God continually bless you as you continue to, 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 to uh, commit to our our team, as we continually do the, what the will of God is for our life. Remember, we are growing and we are learning together in Christ to be everything that God has called us to be. I love you. If you have any questions or concerns, please email me at kccministries at yahoo.com or you can call me. Amen. And our phone number is 919-396-3169. It's 919-396-3169. And you can also go on our website, which is kccministries.org. Amen. And if you want to um, give, you know, I always want to give you an opportunity to give because I do believe that uh, we are a people who believe in sowing and reaping. Financially, whether it's financially, whether it's with our time, whether it's investing in others, um, we want to be a people that sows. Um, because there's a big part of blessings that come when you sow. No matter how you sow, but when you sow. And so we want to sow seeds. So we sow seeds. And if you wanted to sow a seed into our ministry, again, you can go to www.kccministries.org and to give donate to our PayPal. Amen. Or you can give by way of Cash App, which is Money KCC Ministries. That's Money KCC Ministries. Father God, we thank you for those here that have heard your word. We ask God that you would continually bless them as they grow with us here at KCC Ministries. God, we can do nothing with, with, without you, but we know with you all things are possible. So thank you for this time. Thank you, Lord, for this time of growing in you and understanding KCC Ministries, Father. We give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.